What's up, tubers? T.O. here from Simplistic Vision, still in the office, waiting for the boat to be fixed. Come on, please fix Steve so we can go fish. Hey, we're going to do some more lake breakdowns while we're sitting here. We might as well, right? So I had a special request to go out west. So as we're breaking down these lakes in East Texas, I want to jump over and just sneak one in for you real quick. And let's hop out and let's go all the way back up north and to the west to a little lake called Lake Ammon G. Carter. Stick around, I uncovered some good stuff on this one. Here we go. Before we jump into Google Earth, I want to talk to you about what we found as far as contours. Basically nothing. Went out to iBoating, tried to find some contours there. All it shows is the southern half of the lake. It's almost as if this northern half of the lake doesn't even exist, which that was a shocker for me, especially for iBoating. I usually find things there. Also went out to Navionics. Navionics shows the entire lake, but it doesn't break it down by contours, does not really give you any good information. So basically, guys, we don't have very good contours for this lake. Uh, this might be a really good lake to go out and get your graphs and do a little bit of mapping and create your own contours. But anyways, let's jump in. Let's talk about what we found on Google Earth. The good news about this is that Google Earth totally came through here and apparently this lake has a lot of fluctuation. So I'm going to zoom in here for you. This is this is basically what it looks like. So according to them, this is the new lake and this is the old lake. And now when you see it on Google Earth, they said this was the clear part. You can tell this is the clear lake and that this is the uh, this is definitely the, the muddier or the darker water lake. So that totally makes sense now that you see it on Google Earth. Um, so let's go ahead and let's look over here to the left-hand side and talk to you about what we found. So what I've done is I've broken it out. It's very similar to the, the way that we're doing the lake breakdowns now. Um, just done a little better organizing on the left-hand side. So on the left-hand side here, you'll see your creek channels. You'll see ramps, rocks and debris, and then any offshore hotspots. Now, I do want to warn you on the offshore hotspots. Basically, I had to just look at, to see what I found from Google Earth. To, to kind of guess what my offshore hotspot would be there. So it's a little bit tougher, so not a ton of offshore hotspots, but at least the ones that were there, we can almost physically see uh, with Google Earth. So that's always a good thing. So <clears throat> let's talk about it first. Let's go in here and let's talk about creek channels. So I'm gonna click on the creek channel icon and you can see here, we've got really, what, four or five major little creek channels coming in here. So let's go up here to the top. And as far as the date goes, you actually, there's not a lot of different images on this lake. Luckily, the images that they have are really good images. So this would be basically current um, if you were looking at it currently, and you wouldn't really be able to tell where that channel is. But if you click this button and go back to 2014, you'll see that we have a very significant drought going on, and now we've really got a good picture of where those creek channels are. So I've marked those creek channels. This one split a little bit. It was a little interesting because... I can't tell because people have been driving back here. So now you can't tell if this was actually the rest of the creek bed here that flew out or what, or if it, it almost looked like it ended there. But anyways, this was very significant. So they've been enough to where they would set up on those the weed lines and the, uh, you know, the bins and the swings and things like that. So go and take a look at that. Focus heavily on all these turns, you know, those bins, those are going to be your high percentage areas. And then coming up in here, you've got a really good creek channel swing that comes right up by that dock. So right here by that dock, look at that dock, might even have a little mini ramp uh, as well. But right in there, if you're fishing this area, that's what I would des definitely be doing is uh, focus on the creek channel, focus on the bins, and really looking at those creek channel swings. Um, and then you've got a little creek that goes up here as well. So then coming back down here, couple other creeks. We've got one over here to the right side. This one would be Briar Creek. You can see here we've got it marked. Now this looks a lot different when you bring up the water. Um, so as I show it to you here, you're like, oh wow, it's completely different. Like you don't even realize that that island's sitting right there. Uh, but if you bring it down, uh, you can definitely tell that there's something there. So when you're out here fishing this lake, I guess what I'm trying to say is be super, super careful because with no contours, you can't even tell that this stuff is there um, and it could, could be extremely dangerous. So just be really, really careful. Uh, then moving down 
pulling back up here, I'm going to go back down over here to this herring branch. There's another good little creek channel as well over here. Uh, this one wasn't really as defined as much back in the back. It almost, I don't know, it was almost like it maybe just super shallow creek channel, but it's definitely got one back there. So you've got one here. I went ahead and marked it for you guys. You can see it touches the bank right in this area. So I'd say right in here would be a, a good spot. Obviously down in here too, where it makes the big turn. And then anywhere where they make these big turns, fishing around that standing timber, stuff like that, that's going to be your more high percentage areas. And then as we move down here to the southern section or the new section, there's a real good creek channel that came back up through here. So it's got, got it completely marked for you guys. And then there's another one that came back through on this side. So I went ahead and marked it as well. Now let's take a look when we pull this up. That one's a little bit obvious. You can tell there is a boat back in there. So I guess they do have bass boats do go back in there. I guess you just got to be really, really careful because there's so much uh, timber in this lake. Uh, but here, the really good creek channels, man, all the standing timber by these creek channels, that's got to be good. You know those are good. Really focus on the bends. Um, I know I keep saying that, but focus on the bends and the swings, and that's going to save you some time to city fish in the entire creek channel. And you're going to have a lot more success that way as well. Um, so that is the creek channel I found on that side. And then there was one more right down here. That's It's not as defined, but it's, there's definitely one there. And so you've got the creek channel, plus you've got standing timber around that channel. So that could be a nice little honey hole, too, if you can get back there with the boat. It looks like this is probably an, an idle only with as much timber as in there. But I could see it being a really good spot. Uh, maybe to go back and, you know, try and find you a big old tank. So that is all of our creek channels. So now let's talk about all the ramps. There were a ton of ramps on this lake. Um, so I won't go over and point each one of them out because we're getting ready. I'll point them out as we go through the rock and debris. But I just wanted to show you all the different ramps on this lake. So if you were on a ramp pattern for Am and G Carter, you could absolutely smoke them because you've got plenty of ramps to uh, to go through. So uh Let's go ahead and highlight the offshore, or not the offshore stuff, the rocks and debris. And let's start, let's go ahead and start down here. Let's just cover, I didn't find too much on this side, and then we'll work our way up. So down here, the only thing that I found, I mean, obviously you've just standing timber, right? But you've actually got, and I didn't even see those either. You've actually got two more here as well. Two more piles that are right here. So you've got one pile right here, Go ahead and add that one in, and then we've got another pile right here as well. I didn't even see those first time around. I'm not sure how I missed them, but we've got two piles there, and I'll, I'll fix those icons here in a minute. Um, but then we've also got another one right here. So you've got three piles that are right in there. Let's pull the water up and see if those are visible. They sure don't look like it. So those are three really, really, really healthy brush piles that you could fish around for sure. They're kind of just out there in the open, aren't they? So pretty cool. Plus, you got that creek channel back there. So that's really cool. Uh, again, I'll fix those icons before I put that out there for you guys. But then moving down here, I didn't see too much. There is another ramp that's over here. That creek channel that we talked about. And then we've got some rock that was kind of just off the edge of this point. Now, I know you've got rock all in here. So you know all this is going to be good with all that standing timber. But over here, this was like its little isolated rock point with a little bit of standing timber and stuff around it so i went ahead and marked that one for you too and again when you pull this up to current you can't really tell all that stuff is there so looks like it could be pretty healthy all right and then obviously you have the dam um, that's over here so you can fish the riprap by the dam that's got to be good uh, so i put rock there you've also got a little bit more riprap going on right in here around these roads all the way up up through that dam um, and then we get over here and we get back to the ramp that's on this side. And then there's looks like there's an old roadbed that comes through here. And I couldn't see it anywhere else. I can't see where it comes out or where it may have connected to, but there's definitely a road basically just going straight into the water. So I went ahead and put a road on there so you guys could see it, maybe fish around that roadbed, see if there's anything attractive to that. And then this basically takes us down to that pile. So that circles us back around covers us for the southern side. So let's move over to the northern side and let's talk about what we found up here. So obviously you've got um, this dam again on this side. Now you've got riprap or rock. 
Um, and you've got rock in a lot of different areas in this one, but I went ahead and marked like the primo areas that I think you should probably focus on. So right here, you see there's not a ton of rock, but then it collects pretty heavy here. I would definitely fish around here and I would fish around this walkway where this dock is, where you have this break right here. That looks like a great ambush point for the fish to set up in. And again, if I pull it up to 2019, that's not as obvious when you pull up there. So just pay attention to those, uh, those areas. I really like this rocky area in here, and I really like that little area right there, that little cutout. So then moving up here, you've also got some rock that's out here, a little bitty rock pile. Out in here, you've got a ramp here as well. Now, again, moving that up, you can see a little bit of offshore, I guess, rock pile, you could say, but it doesn't look like it's going to be in very deep of water. And then as I moved up here, just some more ramps. There is some rock right in here. Let me zoom back and tell you, show you where I'm at. So there's some rock right in here, right behind this dock. But what I like about this one is that I like any of those that come out and like make a little rock point or look like a little rock pile because the fish like the hug right up against the edges of them. So those are really uh, hot spots for me, at least for me to be able to fish around. I have a lot of success there. Then moving on over, uh, a couple more things up here, just some additional rock piles that are out here. So a little rock pile in here rock pile off that point or some real good rock around that point and then you start just getting into heavy rock back in here so you didn't want to rock mark all of the rock but i just mark again just the hot spot so right here this rock extends out back behind this dock so that looked really good as well and again you know if you're coming up the bank line you'll be able to tell there's a lot of rock in here as well but you can't tell that that comes out right in here if you don't have that water drawn down then we're going to move back in here. There's another ramp back here. Hi, this looks interesting. As you get further back in here, it looks really deep back in here. This, I don't know if this is still here or not. I raised the water and it was gone. So I don't know if that's a swimming platform or if that it looks too steep to be a boat ramp. But again, that could be the image. But anyways, good rock back in here. Good little canal going on. Nice place for them to set up. Looks pretty deep as well. So definitely go back there and check that out. And then coming in here, just some additional bigger rocks, something that's different than everything else around it, right around this little dock here. And then obviously you've got rock around this point. Anytime you get a point with rock, that's that's good. You got to fish that. And then pretty much from this point all the way to about right here is just rocky bank lines. So you can just come up here and it looks like you got some pretty good depth too. So Basically, just come up here, medium diver, crankbait, stuff like that. Fish around these docks. These are nice, isolated docks that you could fish. You know, they're not stacked on top of each other. Probably got a lot of good shade. You got really good chunk rock and boulders and things like that around them. So that whole area looks good from basically that point uh, down. And then, and then you kind of have to start getting a little bit scattered. So you're just kind of going to go to the points. So you got a rock here, rocky point here, a rocky point here. Another one of those little piles I was telling you about where they're kind of combined together and make a little point. So one of those is right there as well. That one's got some really big chunk rock. Love that stuff. And then over here, you've got kind of an isolated little rock pile. It's almost like a little hump that comes out here. And then you got a ramp and then some debris right here. Let's draw that water up. I'll show you what that looks like. So it almost looks like we got some rock in here or something going on, maybe an old ramp didn't see that but you can see it looks just completely different than what we're looking at when that water's drawn down but you can tell it's a high spot you also got another little rock pile there yeah i don't even see that when we draw the water down so i don't know what that was that we were looking at so we also got some more rock in here and then moving up Again, just pointing out the isolated stuff. So I know there's a rock kind of scattered everywhere, but right here, I like this little rocky point, especially with the standing timber around it. I can see them collecting up in here. Back in here, I don't know what this is, but it looks like the juice. It's just a bunch of junk, right? The hardest stuff to fish is usually the best place to find fish. And ironically, there happens to be a boat on it when I pull up the image, but if you're out there fishing normally, you're like, oh, that just looks like a cool dock. But if you draw that water down, you're like, holy cow, look what! Look at all the junk that's underneath this thing. That, to me, looks like a prime, prime honey hole to go be checking out. So definitely go in there 
and dig around. I'm sure that guy's going to be really happy that I told everybody that their dock is a, is a prime spot. But, hey, that's just what it is. It is what it is. I'd be happy to live on a dock as a prime spot. All right, so let's go back to 2014. And let's keep moving up. We got another ramp here with a bunch of rocks and things like that. Another uh, nice little rocky pile that's coming off the point here. So you obviously have the rocks on the point, and then it kind of goes into not pea gravel, but it basically breaks down to a lot smaller rock. And then you get into this bigger, chunker, chunkier rock. So right out there where I've marked that rock would be probably a good spot to look at. Got another ramp up there. Again, you've got some rock out in here, but it's all similar. Uh, and then you got a ramp out here as well. Tons of ramps. Get down here, and there's this little isolated little rocky point that's right over here. Looks like it's got some pretty good-sized rocks on it as well. So hopefully that is still there. It looks like they were working on this at one time. I can't see them moving that. Um, if we move the water up, you can't tell. So there's no way to tell if that's still there or not. But if it is, that's probably a pretty good little isolated rock pile. You've also got some additional, you know, rocks going on in here. Um, you know, normally I wouldn't point that out, but it's with all this sandy and muddy junk all around it. This is kind of its own little isolated rock in this area. So definitely go and check it out because you can see here there's not a lot going on once we get past that. As we move up here, I'll show you where I'm at. I'm moving up the bend now. As we move up here, just uh, more ramps, obviously. Lots and lots of ramps. We've got some rocks right in this area. This looks good for cranking shallow bill. Looks really good shallow bill. Square bill uh, cranking. And then ramps here, rocks here as well. Some additional rock that's out here. Nice little rocky point, kind of like that one. Another ramp here. And every time I find the juicy spots, there's a boat on it. These look really, really good. See how they're just different? These two little points right in here, I don't even know if that's a point, but you could call this a point. Um, they just look different. They look different than everything else around them. The rock's a different color, everything. You know that those are going to be main, you know, fish attracting areas because they just are. They're just totally different than everything, and you know the fish are going to be attracted to them. So then you've also got a ramp here. You've also got rocks in this area. A lot more ramps over here just ramp city. This point came out and I was going to mark it for you guys as an offshore spot, but there's nothing on it. I don't see any rocks or anything. I think these are birds that are collecting out the side. There's no cover off the point whatsoever. I don't see any shell beds or anything like that. So I went ahead and I didn't, I didn't even mark it for you guys. Uh, I don't believe, but I may have put one out there and just said shallow point, check it out, but that'd be about it. And then nothing up here from rocks and stuff like that. I didn't see anything at all. And moving back here, you can see where I'm at now. I'm up here. Did find a ramp right in here. This looks like one of the main ramps. It's the Selma Park public ramp. And then through here, you see all this, you know, it's just mud and dirt and junk like that. But just this bank line from right here to right here has some scattered rocks. So maybe go up here and just pound that bank line a little bit. It's right there by the ramp. So if you're in a kayak, that would be like a primer, a pry a prime area to go fish because it's nice and close by um, and it's different than everything else. Then moving up here, you've got some additional rocks, some ramps. You've got some debris that's back in here. This looked interesting. A lot of this stuff was gone when I moved the lake up, but of course that's going to be under the water. So we don't know what that is, but it's definitely some type of debris. And you can see those platforms. It looks like they floated off. So there's no telling. A lot of junk around this area right in here. <clears throat> Then moving up here, uh, just some scattered rock and things, totally different, again, than everything that was around it. And that's basically from this point here all the way to this point. And then moving up, we've got some additional ramps. There is some debris that was out here. I don't know what this is, but it's like a concrete thing. I'm not sure what it was, but that could be good being so isolated. I don't know, though. I don't know if that's worth taking a trip up there for, uh, but definitely fish around it. You've got another ramp that's up here. You know, what's cool about some of these ramps, too, is if you look at them, and, they, and you'll see them as I go through them, some of them are just like all concrete. They have these huge concrete platforms. Um, so those can be really, really good to fish around. I thought about putting some marks in here for you guys, but I don't know the depth of those. And I don't know about getting back in here. This looks pretty dang shallow. So I'm not sure about going back there, but there is a ramp back there. So maybe if you're back there, scan around, see what you can find. 
Got an old palm that's right here, but again, it didn't look significant enough for me to uh, to really mark it for you guys. I don't see any good significant contour changes or anything like that. And then moving up here, finally get into some rocks right around these points. So we've got a little bit of scattered rock right in here, a little bit right in here as well. And again, you got to be careful. I see all kinds of standing timber and then also rock over in here. So if that is accessible, uh, I would definitely run up there and check it out, especially with that creek channel being up there and just see what you can find. Then coming back down the bank line, we're just going to come back down and circle back down to the bottom. When we get down in here, we've got some rock off of this side. So you can see here these little points. I missed a ramp. There's a ramp right there. But some really good rock right in there. And then, of course, that other creek channel, we've got two more ramps in that area, some more rock that's over in here. So right off of this little point. And it looks like a, maybe a little tree line, maybe. I'm not sure, but it looks pretty straight. So maybe fish around those trees as well while you're out there. Then come up here, you've got ramps. You've got additional rocks right in here. More ramps. More ramps, ramps. We're going to just be like Ramp City here in a minute. Um, then we get down off of this side. Let me zoom back here real quick. Get down off this side. We've got some more rock that's right out here. It's like a little, little point that comes off has some rock. And then we just get into tons of ramps. So you'll just see here as I scroll down on all the different ramps. I'll point out things that are different as we're scrolling down. There's something here. I can't tell if this is a brush pile or what it is, but it's different. It's definitely different. It's a little, little circle. So I just marked debris on it, but go out there and scan it and see what that is. That looks interesting. And then look at all these ramps. There's tons of ramps. And then finally, when you get off here to this side, then you can see we've got some more rock in this area. Got a little offshore rock pile going on here off that ramp. So I marked that for you guys. And then pretty much from this spot right here where you see this rock icon all the way to here is all really good rock. I could see that being a pretty decent place, especially, you know, if, if you've got any kind of major creek channel coming through here, which we can't tell, but maybe it's coming up and hitting along that bank line. So I'd go check that out. You've got some pretty good rock going all the way up and down that bank line. Plus, you've got standing timber to fish around as well. So check that out. You've also got a ramp over here to look at. Now, these docks look a little bit deeper, and then you've got some rock that's out here. So if you pulled up to these docks, you might miss this because you might think, oh, there's no rock here, but the rock's actually way out here. So go out there and fish around that point and see what you can find. That can be a good little place to throw shaky heads, things like that, and also your crankbaits. Tons of ramps going on in here. More ramps. Told you we're getting ready to get in a ramp bill. I think we passed ramp bill, so we're, we're done now. So then we get down here. We've also got another rock pile here. And then right here, they said this is a 20-foot tunnel. So if you can fish in the tunnel, I'd fish in the tunnel because that's really good shade. But definitely fish on the outsides of these tunnels. So fish here, fish here, you know, fish here, and fish here. Because you know that that's going to create some kind of current, especially if you have any kind of wind. So uh, definitely go in there and check that out. And then you've got your rip wrap around your, your dam as well. Um, and then we get back to basically where we started, which was over here where we started talking about more rocks. Um, and then we get out here to this little, you know, rock pile that was out here. So that covers us for all of the rocks and debris and all that good stuff. The last thing we have to talk about really is just the offshore stuff. And there weren't too many things I could find offshore. Um, this is what I was able to find. So you can see here, we found this pile that was way out here. So that's definitely going to be offshore. Um, in fact, I'll just, I'm going to pull this up to 2019 and show you. So you can see here, we've got kind of a pile that's out there. Right here, you've got this little point. It comes further out, so you definitely want to check that one out. See how much that point comes out with a nice flat top. Same thing here on this point. If we move it over, you, know, you can tell that it comes way out, so be careful if you're boating on this area. But uh, obviously, that's a good fishing area, good, nice, long, flat point, um, good for fall and stuff like that. And then... Moving over here, main lake point, but there was some debris that was off this point right out here off the edge. If I zoom in here enough, you can see it. I don't know what it is. It's like three or four different 
big stumps or something like that. I can't tell what it is, but definitely check that out. If we pull that back again, that's pretty far off the bank, not something that if you were fishing the bank that you would notice was there. And then we get up here, uh, a pretty long point again that comes out. Move that back up for you and see. As you can see, it's definitely covered by the water. Then moving up here, got some more rock that was right off the edge of this that looks like it's kind of an offshore, I guess you could say, because you're not right on the bank. You need to pull off a little bit and fish that. I could probably put that with the rock pile. And then up here, this is interesting because, again, you don't see that island, and then all of a sudden, or you see the island, all of a sudden if I do that, the island's gone. But there is some rock right around in here, and it's right around that little creek channel swing that comes right in here. See, so, yeah, if I move the uh, the creek channel swing here, you can see it. So now you got the creek channel swing coming right here, plus you got some rock here. I can see that being a primo spot as well. Then moving over here, you got to be careful. Out here in the middle, there's this island that's out here uh, with really good rock around it. So I marked rock on all of that, but be extremely careful if you're boating. And you, you might be coming through here thinking you're fine, and then bam, you're on top of the island. Uh, and then over here, just got some offshore rock piles, things like that. You've got one here, kind of isolated. That's pretty far off the bank line if you're out there fishing. You've also got some more that's pretty far out here. Um, this rock pile is out here. Obviously, this is shallow because we wouldn't be able to find that on Google Earth. But if you look out here, this got a little point with a good little rock pile. Oops. And then we're going to move up this side. We've got a hump and a pond that was right here. So you got a little pond that's right in here. Um, you can see it if I move it back, 2014. That was the pond I told you. I wasn't really sure if we were going to mark. Went ahead and marked it, but it's not that great. Uh, at least it doesn't look that great, but I could be totally wrong. That could be a honey hole. And there's also a hump up here as well that you guys could take a look at. I think that might cover us, guys. It takes us back in there. We talked about that rock. Didn't find anything offshore on this side, so that pretty much wraps us up for Lake uh, Lake Ammon G. Carter. We found a lot of good stuff on Google Earth. Thank goodness, because we wasn't able to find much uh, via anything else, you know, eye boating or navionics. Hey, if you have not hit that subscribe button yet, please do. It helps our channel out tremendously. And if you want to pick up these waypoints, go out to simplisticfishing.com. We've got the waypoints available for you. And until next time, guys, I hope you catch your BB. Take care.